la ciencia. Welcome back to the Kickback DMV. I am Diamond B. Frazier, and I'm back, like, for real this time. I know I've been gone for some years, and y'all like, girl, where the girl at? Like, she's here. And today I have with me Darius. How's everybody doing? What's okay. Hold on, pause. Let me make sure I got the name right. Did I get the name right? You did get it Okay, right. I got it right. So look. You're actually one of few who got it right the first time. Like, See, I look, appreciate that. That's why you come to the kickback, because <laughs> you know what you're doing. So I am going to get to know you a little bit. So I appreciate you giving me your Instagram, your Twitter, all that stuff. Like I was scrolling through trying mm -hmm. to see like what you about? So I'm gonna ask you a couple of things Thank about. You, oh, I'm gonna ask you a couple of things that you posted online, whether it was a meme, a caption, and you just give us a little bit of insight about that, so we can figure out who you are. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. It was a meme. It says every smoker has a story. So before you tell them, before you tell them, <laughs> smoking kills. I want you to know that something is already killing them. Are you a smoker? Depends on what we smoking. Okay. So are you the smoker with the story? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, tell us about your smoking story. Where, where did this right. start? So I started smoking weed at like 16. Okay. And the funniest story about that was, it was random. Okay, so I used to work at this place called Woodham Country Club. Okay. And while I was on my break, because I was working a double with some of my coworkers, they were like, hey, we going to chill out at the crib real quick until it's time to clock back in. I was like, I bet. So I'm in the back of the car, we chilling, we bumping music and everything like that. And then that's when one of his homies was like, yo, we just gonna make a few errands. And then his brother turned around looking at me like, yo, we gonna get you high shit tonight. Woo! And I'm like, no choice. And I was like, I was like, okay. Like, I was always curious about it. So it was just kind of like one of those things where it's like, sure. Okay. And if I don't like it, I'm never gonna do this again, but hey. But you didn't feel pressure to do it. No, they were my friends. They were my homies. It was. It wasn't like a, you're going to do it. It was like in a joking manner. Like, hey, yeah, we're going to get you high, shit. But are you down with that? And I was like, yeah. So what was your first high like after that? Was it like, oh yeah, this is stuff. Oh, like, man. give me some more. That shit was beautiful. We uh, cut on some music, mm -hmm. played some instrumentals. Okay. That was my first time freestyling high. Oh. And it was like the best experience of my life because I'm already a freestyle artist, so it's just kind of like cool. And then it just amplified it a lot more. So yeah, okay. that's what got me started. <laughs> but also on that meme, it says that know that something is already killing them. Oh yeah. So aside from just recreational, is it does it help soothe like any pain or anything that you're going through? Uh it slows down the mind for me. Okay. It's just kinda like when I feel like some sense of like anxiety or something like that, mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like, boom, when I hit it, I just kind of chill out, analyze the situation a little bit more. Okay. And then especially at parties, like if I'm smoking at parties, I, some people I don't know is around, I'm a little more focused on what's going on around me instead of like just being, hey, I'm high, blah, 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 blah. Okay, it's cool. so it's just yeah. get you right in the mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, a little insight. All right, mm -hmm. so the next thing, I was born in the wrong generation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why do you feel that way? What's wrong? What's wrong with the generation? What's uh, going on? I mean, okay, my bad. So I guess saying the wrong generation is the wrong thing to say because some of us are really cool and some of us are just really eh okay. in other places. I would just say like I'm more like an old soul sometimes. I'm sometimes okay. a hermit. I like being in my room watching my anime and just vibe out and chill while other people want to just go and be reckless and okay. that's just not my vibe. So what generation would you say you should have been born in? Probably like in like the 90 through 89. Okay. Because okay. I low-key like the attitude era. Like that was my fun era. What don't you like about the people in our generation or things that we do? I don't like how selfish we can be sometimes who entitled acting generation yeah because mm. like all we had to all we really got to do is just love one another and just be cool and respect each other's opinion and right it'll be smooth but not everybody respects other people's opinions so it's just Ciao. today today <laughs> you gotta well, apologize look. for everything well i'm sorry i didn't mean it like this i gotta uh, oh, yeah. It's like, look, I said what I said. You agree or you don't. Keep scrolling. Exactly. Exactly. It could be so simple. It could all be so simple. So this last one that I saw on your Instagram, mm -hmm. you were writing an English paper. Mm -hmm. 
and you have put a portion of it up and it says the next morning i was awakened by a terrifying cry that sent chills down my spine my father was in the bathroom screaming in pain he was leaning over the sink shaking trembling and sweating so i did notice that you did lose your father so mm -hmm. I, my condolences to you i know it's been some time and i can't imagine what it's like to lose a parent and i didn't want to get too heavy with that so of course the next we're going to be on the up but i just want to give you to give us a little bit of insight of what that was like for you like how are you coping till this day i haven't thought about it in so long um i would say this uh throughout when it happened it was very sudden mm -hmm. like my dad passed through a heart attack so, so you didn't even it was no preparation was nothing, like nothing just though. like boom it happened but my dad was a soldier yeah. Like, he's been through so many things, like triple heart pass, uh, what is it, triple heart, uh, what is it called again? I can't even tell you. Triple bypass. Thank okay, you. Triple bypass, <laughs> triple heart bypass surgery, mm -hmm. uh, like three kidney transplants. Okay. Uh, he suffered through many strokes, oh, um, minor, major, it was just, but he kept on pushing. He was always the one to light up a room and stuff like that, so when it happened, it, it had to be like, a shock. Yeah. Because it's like, my dad get through anything, so what? Yeah, so... Hold when, on, wait, what, what? And then when he went to the hospital and everything like that, um, I just went back to sleep because I'm so used to that mentality, like, he's going to come back home. Right. And then my mom came downstairs. She called me and my two sisters downstairs and was like, we lost him. Yeah. And that's how that happened. Okay. Um, now, coping with it, I've always been reminding myself of who he was mm -hmm. and how he would like for me to be. Okay. So, like, yeah, it's it's now it's no longer like a sad situation. It's like I'm happy actually that okay. he's in a better place because he was suffering while he was here. Right. So, yeah. Okay. So it's all in the mindset and perspective of how you view things because exactly. you can just weigh yourself down over something you can't change but just in a positive light like he's good he ain't suffering like right like okay. probably up there partying with jesus like amen hey. okay <laughs> i know that you are a ravens fan mm -hmm. but like people say that they fans but like i'm like do you even know what a fan is like are you a fan fan or are you just like the team so what we're gonna do is a little uh -oh. bit of ravens trivia uh -oh. and you gotta tell me what the answer is but it's not gonna be too difficult because I'm gonna give you some multiple choice. Are you sure? I'm gonna give you some multiple choice. I haven't been watching football in a long time. You know it's a little bit in the back end, so you don't okay. gotta, you know, I think some of the questions are like, I don't know, we gonna see, you tell me. We gonna I, see I, if you I, a I, fan I, or not. I, so look, this is me. trivia. <laughs> so the first question is, the Baltimore Ravens name is based on a poem by which American poet? Oh, Edgar Allan Poe. Ooh, okay. I didn't have to read the multiple choice. Look at you. You got that right. Okay, I you got the, you know. Okay. What year were the Ravens founded? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> what are the multiple choices? <laughs> we have A, 1998, B, 1996, C, 1995, or D, 1997. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm going, I'm going back. It's always, you know, I'm going to go with C. You're going to go with C? C. Well, all fails pick C. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Like, always go. Well, the answer is actually B, 1996. I was you this were close. close. I was, it, like, it was, it was right close. Here. Okay. I put my toe on it. You, so it you get like, to have a little bit. The Baltimore Ravens <laughs> are one of the only two NFL teams that have what? That have what? Yeah, what do they have? A Raven. <laughs> oh, okay. No, <laughs> only one of the two. So another team has it. So it can't be a Raven. Okay. Uh. Let me know if you need multiple choice. I got you. Multiple choice. Okay, multiple choice it is. So A, no cheerleaders. B, a logo that faces left. C, a perfect season. Or D, a marching band. I'm gonna pick B. You gonna pick what? We can't hear you. I'm gonna pick B. You gonna pick B? B. B, a logo that faces left. The answer is a marching band. D. What? Nobody else has a marching band? One of the two. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> That was nice. I'm like, do I even pay attention? Like, I just wait till the game come on. Right, that's what I'm like. Right, what? I don't know. Which Baltimore quarterback was the youngest quarterback in NFL history to start a playoff game? To start a playoff game? Mm -hmm. The youngest young, in history? The youngest in history. 
Okay, give me the give me the multiple choice. Multiple choice. I'm thinking, because <laughs> I'm thinking somebody, but I don't want to say it unless I want to. I, I need your multiple choice. Who's the choices? Okay, sir, don't be mad if I screw up your name. Um, A. Trent Dilfer, B. Joe Flacco, C. Tony Banks, D. Lamar Jackson. I'm about to say Lamar Jackson. Please. Okay, shout out. You got it right. Yeah. Lamar Jackson, 21 years old. <laughs> okay. I, I paid attention that far. You knew? That far, yes. Okay, so so far, you think you a fan? I'm cool. I dabble. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm a kind of sort of fan. I'm not, I mean, I'm not a football fan that much no more, but, but I'm a hometown fan. Like, you're a hometown. You know, I, so we're going with the hometown exactly. Ravens. Exactly. Which team did the Ravens defeat in Super Bowl 35? Super Bowl 35. Come on, tell me. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. Is it? Uh, you want to phone a friend? <laughs> can I phone a friend? Can phone I friend. phone a friend? Call your friend. Like, Go ahead and ask him on off camera. Yo. <laughs> that has been a long way. And what is, because I'm thinking New York Giants. It's definitely the Giants. Okay, all right. It's the Giants? The Giants. Okay, let's Giants. see. Right, cool, cool, cool. It is the Giants. Let's go. Okay, I was thinking that the whole time. Okay, the Let's go. Yes. All right, so that's it for trivia. Oh, uh, you know what I say? Is he a fan? I think he a fan. I think you a fan. 50 points. 50 points. You, you got a little something. You know. This next segment is called Peep That Tweet. Mm -hmm. So I found a little couple tweets. Ooh. So we want to talk about them. You Ooh. know, it ain't nothing too scandalous. Nah. You know, keep it simple. But you know, get, just get, elaborate <laughs> a little bit. I got you. All right, so the first one says, if only you knew how much anger they put in my heart from their lack of faith in me. Hashtag F family. Well, you spelled out the F word. I don't really curse, but you know. Oh. Let's talk about it. Did I say that? You said that. Man, I must have been angry. You said that. Hmm. Okay, so let me think about where that came from. Oh, I can okay. tell you what it was. Uh, <laughs> can you? You want me to tell you what it was? Sure. That was May 18th, 2012. So think about where you were in that time of life where you just started with music. Uh, two, 2012 was such an ugly year for me. My goodness. It was such an ugly year for me. Okay. Um, okay, so it was around the time period where it was still kind of like, I haven't even told my family that I was into music or okay. anything like that. And one day I was talking to one of my cousins and they really doubted me. Like, just saying like, Honestly, I think you should just let this music thing go and just actually find, you know, which a real job. And I'm like, a real job? But music is a real job. And it's not even just about music. I do so many other things through that right. outlet. Like, I'm not just saying you're trying to be just a rapper. Correct. I'm trying to be, I want to be the greatest host of all time. I want to be the greatest event curator of all time. I'm trying to be a little bit of everything, like model and all this other different, <clears throat> excuse me, all that different stuff. So when he said that, that kind of like pissed me off mm -hmm. beyond. <laughs> like, Does he do music himself? No. See, that's the thing. If you want to tell me He's what I should or shouldn't like, be doing, you, know, you should at least be doing it. Exactly. Wow. Like, I'm just over here like, I'm sick of, at that moment, it was like, I'm sick of normies trying to tell me what I'm supposed to be. Right. And when they say like a real job, a regular night, well, if you don't think that's a real job, that's, that's cool. I'm not going to knock you for it, but... Mm -hmm. It's a real job for me. Correct. And I'm in control of my own destiny, so who are you to tell me otherwise that I can't do what I love to do? Do you think it was because they don't think that you're good at music, so instead of saying that, it's like, hey, you know, don't quit your day job, or was it like, I don't think that that's going to be able to financially take care of your responsibility? Oh, it was definitely like a financial type of thing, because okay. this was like before I was even getting paid for gigs. Mm -hmm. So from that, from that aspect, I understood where he was coming from, but at the moment, I was very young and very, like, I was very into myself. Right. Like, not arrogant, but, like, more confident. Exactly. And hearing it come from a family member kind of, like, really... Woo, you know, I feel like <laughs> yeah, family yeah. is what you make it, but how do you feel about family? That was years ago. How do you yeah. feel now? We're in 2021. Um, how I feel about family now is, it's not so much about blood, it's about whoever's there for you. Okay. So, like... My brother right here, like, we're not blood, but mm -hmm. I know him since I was two, and he always had my back. Right. Like, versus, you know, a cousin that I knew for years, and who never showed up to a single show of mine. Right. So, you know, I love him. I love him all. Like, it's all love. It's just family, whoever you, you know, make it to be. It's not always blood. Man, what hashtag? Put a quote. <laughs> write it down. Put it in your diary. Family, what you make it. He said it. I just agree. That's all. 
ass. That's it, that's all. <laughs> I mean, he said what I said. He said what he said. Sensitive generation. That's on period. Period. <laughs> so the next tweet says, I just noticed I lost a lot of friends because of the S word that I do and the problems that I have with my anger. Mm -hmm. So that also was during that time period. Where do you feel like the anger came from and have you evolved or does that monster still come out? Uh, the anger really came from being misunderstood Okay. because I'm a very different person. Like, um, like even in my friend group in high school, in comparison to like my friend group now, completely different. I feel like around that time I was like misunderstood with a lot of different things. Like I did it, like everyone likes to play basketball. I don't like playing basketball. I like, I mean, I watch from the sideline, but I'm not an athlete. Right. Um, some people like to hang out on the front porch and everything, and I just like to actually walk around and meet somebody new. Okay. I like to geek and have fun and stuff like that, and, and like sometimes it's probably inappropriate timing, but okay, okay. Well, fun I, fun. I like, I, I just like to bring that out when I'm feeling kind of awkward, and, and other people just look at me like, eh, you're kind of weird, and I don't want to be around you. I didn't, I wasn't feeling it. I was feeling kind of numb to the world at that moment. Uh, coming now to two, 2021, mm -hmm. um, I'm just, I'm just living life. Okay. I feel, I feel way better than what I did back then. Like when I said 2012 was an ugly period, it was a mess. And, you know, growing up, I didn't even know where I was even going to go. Like right. I even did question my, my music, my event hosting skills, my carrying skills, all that. And I just kind of said, you know, F it. Yeah. And I just didn't want to be a part of anything. Are you still friends with those people from 2012 that you are now? Or is it like, forget them, I didn't met new people along the way? Um, I would say like, I dropped a few people in 2012, okay. but it's still, it's still love to them. It's just, we can't, you know, be like, together or you know happy in the same setting like that because it's just like they, they will never understand so the people are some of the people that misunderstood you during that time mm -hmm. still in your life at this point and now they've evolved and understand and accept how you are uh yeah they're still in my life as acquaintance uh or like a randomly hit me up be like hey how's everything going mm -hmm. and it's going well mm -hmm. but that's about it that's about it yeah. shoot you should have caught me when you knew me <laughs> Now move on. Bye. My favorite, with it or quit it. So I'm going to just give you, you know, cute little three statements. You tell me if you with it. That means you agree or quit it. Like, no, nah, I don't agree with that. And then you tell me why. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Let's do it. All right, so the first one. You cannot be woke and be a church goer. The Bible says oppressing things like slaves obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and sincerity of heart just as you would obey Christ. Are you with that statement or you disagree? With it or quit it? With it as far as like the quote you just said or? So it, so the main part of this is you cannot be woke and be a church goer. And they were given oh. an example saying that the Bible says oppressing things. Mm -hmm. Quit it. Because one thing about, in my opinion, about being woke, mm -hmm. you gotta be open-minded to certain things. Okay. And I feel like with the Bible, it gets misconstrued sometimes, mm -hmm. and like people take certain parts and be like, "Oh no, this is ugly. This is bad. This is right. not what it is." But in hindsight, like I can be Christian and be woke as long as I keep the you know open mindedness to everyone's belief. Okay. So. So you think woke I equates think, to being open minded? Yeah. Okay. Like, and I feel like a lot of people who do decide, you know, they're woke, they like to bash other people for not being woke, at least not in their definition of being woke. Right. And I don't feel like, I don't agree with that. I don't okay. agree with any of that. So I would say quit it. Okay, quit it. Do, are you knowledgeable about the Bible that the statement that I just read, you feel like you can interpret that for someone that feels like it's oppressing? I know the Bible enough, but I'm like one of those type of people who, you know, determine it on your own. Okay. I don't like I don't I don't like to unless like I fully disagree with what you're saying. So if I read the statement back to you, can yeah. you tell me what it means to you? Read it back. Okay, let's read it back. Mm -hmm. 
Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Hmm, earthly masters. It's not what I think of stuff like that. I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like my parents. <laughs> I, think, I think my parents, and okay. I respect my parents. I love my parents. Now, do I think of them as like my slave owners and stuff like that? No, but like, I agree, you should respect everyone. Okay. So, whatever the case may be, you respect everyone. So you equate the word "obey" to respect. Yeah, I don't okay. think I don't think "obey" as in like you should listen to me. Not oh, "obey" to me feels like, hey, bro, would you mind if you can do this for me or do this another type of way? Okay. And then you'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I got this. Yeah. Okay. That's how we'll you we'll take it. Look <laughs> at him. Interpretation. The Bible the for interpretation. Mm -hmm. The media has an inaccurate depiction of Baltimore. It's not as dangerous as it's portrayed. With it or quit it? I'm with it. Okay. I'm with it. Baltimore is dangerous, but so is so many other places, so many other cities, okay. so many other countries. You know, but it's not as dangerous as people were saying. Like, there's another side of us where it's like there's an underground scene. There's a love for the art. There's a love for people. There's a love for, like... You know different ways of thinking like it's not it's not all that bad if you know you know you don't get to know it are there particular parts of Baltimore where it's like uh -uh, just if you ain't from there just don't go but if you want to really know where we're at like the good you know all that you described mm -hmm. the artsy you should go over here yeah oh yeah most definitely because <laughs> some people are just like you know it they, we can tell when a, when a tourist is a tourist <laughs> like, we, we already know that. We, so we what's do. the part of Baltimore where it's like, uh-uh, don't go there? Mm. Okay, I don't, I, I would say definitely Papa Grove at night, don't go there. Okay. No debt. <laughs> don't go there. Uh, I can't name any other spots right now. Okay. But there are definitely some spots <laughs> that are like, shouldn't be going. nah, don't go there at night, bro. Don't go there. Okay, well, Baltimore ain't all that bad. He knows it. I ain't like, you know, I'm lit it. He know it. Mm -hmm. So listen to him. Most women are bisexual because of poor relationships they have with men. She's almost given up on men. So almost as in, you know, I got one foot in. Mm -hmm. You know, I ain't lesbian, but I still date a man. I'm bisexual. How do you feel about that? I'm bisexual. Right, like, is that accurate? Like, yeah, so you with that statement or you quit it. Like, you agree that women become bisexual because of a bad experience they have with a man. Mm, I'm gonna quit on that one. Okay. Because not every woman has been through that type of experience, mm -hmm. and some of it is just literally a choice. Like, you, like you know, I could be. I like women. Okay. I love women. I want to be with a woman. You know. So I would say quit it. But why be bisexual? But why be bisexual? I mean, why not? Best of both worlds. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> if you get away with it, you can rock with it. Cool. Okay. Like. Whatever, do what you do. do I wouldn't. I wouldn't say past trauma really always dictate who you become. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. Look at him. Open minded. Whoa. That's his definition. <laughs> okay. That concluded today's episode of the Kickback DMV with Darius. So before we go, you got to tell us where to follow you, mm -hmm. what to subscribe to, and I need you to give us some words of wisdom for you go. Okay. All right. You can follow me on Instagram, which is D A dot r-i-o-u-s nine four follow me on twitter with d-a dash oh well, underscore my bad <laughs> uh r-i-o-u-s nine four you can subscribe uh to actually you can check out my link in my bio i got a okay. i got a single out called split velvet okay check so, that out the sun is barely out so i'm giving that shine walk past a couple girls once said yo baby you fine definitely check that out as it's on every streaming platform it's on spotify title all that good stuff i'm not even gonna go down a whole list i feel like y'all should the just link. click it <laughs> and the words of wisdom for us tell us something good tell us something we should listen to what you got be yourself mm. that's it just be yourself like don't let the jewels don't let the you know the swag don't let the don't let all that control your persona just be who you always been like from day one i like it be yourself i'm gonna be me you are tuned into the kickback dv catch us on the next episode you yes, feel like i got the juice check my style yeah that's the proof i'm happy being alive took a take you my grind the sun is barely out so i'm giving that shine